There was a new ride on the shores of Lake Erie that created quite a stir. A ride many had been wishing for, but only the brave dare to embrace. A ride that defines the true meaning of the emotional ups and downs only something special can provide. Hi everybody. You thought I was referring to the new Millennium Force roller coaster at Cedar Point, didn't you? But as impressive as that roller coaster is, it paled in comparison to the daily roller coaster ride Indians fans experienced during one of the most exciting seasons in Indians history. The long-awaited pennant race many Tribe fans had never experienced had become a reality. A pennant race that lasted past sunset on the very last day of the season. A race that lasted until game number 162. How did we get there? What happened during the best that professional sports has to offer? What only Major League Baseball can offer its great fans? The six-month journey that is the baseball season and the true litmus test of a team's character and ability. I don't think any of us saw it coming, but there was no mistaking it when it happened. Together, we will relive the exciting moments from the 2000 season, a season that can only be described as an emotional roller coaster ride. Spring training opened with its usual high energy and enthusiasm as another exciting season of Indians baseball was about to unfold. It wasn't too long, however, before the unexplained started happening. That would be a harbinger of things to come. Just a week into camp, first-year skipper Charlie Manuel arrives at the complex one Friday morning complaining of a sore stomach. Nevertheless, he proceeds to pitch batting practice that day, then on Saturday, and for a third day in a row on Sunday. But the pain in his stomach is too much on Monday morning, and by that afternoon, Charlie has eight inches of his colon removed. Who knew then that the toughness Charlie Manuel displayed that weekend would be the cornerstone of the ball club during its fight to the finish? Coming out of spring training, the Cleveland Indians are a veteran ball club on a mission to make their sixth straight appearance in the postseason. And the best fans in baseball had lofty expectations as well, as some new faces are added to a star-studded roster. Reason enough to start the millennium with great anticipation and enthusiasm. The first three months of the season were an exercise in both faith and frustration. The six-month journey began in unusual fashion for the Indians. They finished the month of April in second place, two games in back of the Chicago White Sox. And the offense was sputtering, hitting only 268 as a team. However, it was the Tribe's pitching staff that kept the ship afloat. Fly ball. Deep right center field, Ramirez over, Lofton says, I've got it at the track, and he does. The Indians win opening day in Baltimore. First Major League victory for Charlie Manuel. A swing and a miss by Dombach, he becomes Finley's sixth strikeout victim. The pitch, Freeman with a drive to deep left. This ball is gone, and the Indians are back on top. Finley's pitch. A swing and a miss, he strikes out Curtis for out number one. Got him to chase something up and out of the strike zone. Now the pitch. A swing and a smash into left, there's a base hit and an RBI. Scoring is Freiman, stopping at second is Alomar. That pitch swung on a miss, chased a curve low and outside. Carse with an impressive eighth inning. Fans roaring 55 degrees. The one-two pitch. A swing and a smash up the middle, knocked down by Carson, flips the first for the out. The game is over and the Indians win. As May approached, the disabled list, which had already claimed pitchers Bartolo Colon and Dave Risky, outfielders Kenny Lofton and Jacob Cruz, who would be lost for the season, and catcher Sandy Alomar, put its clutches into Charles Nagy and Jared Wright. Ricardo Rincon, Paul Shuey, Sean DePaula, and Paul Rigdon. He delivers. The pitch hit high in the air to deep center. Cruz racing back. Cruz on the track. Cruz near the wall. Jumps up, makes the catch. Bangs into the wall. Falls to the track. Hangs onto the ball, but he is hurt. And I don't know if Jared did something to himself. Sandy Alomar out on the mound. And they're going to call for pitching coach Dick Pohl. 
Despite resembling a mass unit, the Tribe gains a half game on the White Sox thanks to an 11-7 run at the end of the month to pull to 500, but remain in second place. The first time the Indians are not sitting atop the AL Central at the end of May since 1994. However, the bats begin to wake up. Swung on, hit high, and deep to left center. Back to the wall as Erstead, this ball off the top of the wall. Around third is Toby scoring. Right behind him is Freiman scoring. Justice with a double. The throw gets by the catcher Molina. On to third, Justice. The throw by Sean Weiss, not in time. Fly ball, pretty well hit into right center field. There's Salmon on the run again at the warning track at the wall. And then it's gone. Travis Ryman goes deep. The Indians hit their fifth home run tonight. Thurman delivers, and he sends a drive to deep left. Away back. Go on to the bleachers. A grand slam for Manny Ramirez. His 11th, which is a career best for a Cleveland Indian. Here's the payoff pitch. Fryman hits it deep to left field. Stay up ball, it's gone! Fryman with number 13. Travis Fryman with his 200th career home run. So a bit of a milestone for Travis on a ball that he just mashed. But the bats did not stay hot for very long. As the Tribe's RBI machine, Manny Ramirez pulls a hamstring and is on the DL for the first time in his career. At first, what was thought to be only a five to seven day injury turns out to be much more serious and becomes a six week stint on the disabled list. It was the beginning of a month where the Indians were beset with injuries and roster moves using 21 pitchers and 14 position players. The Tribe loses 16 games in the month and drops eight full games in the standings to the White Sox. The month of June ends with the trade of David Justice to the New York Yankees. A hole three months deep poses an unfamiliar obstacle. Thankfully, the midpoint of the season is upon us, and as the Indians head into the All-Star break, they are just two games over 500 at 44 and 42, with a team batting average of 277 and an ERA that is ranked eighth in the league. Tonight we celebrate the greatest players of the game. Joined on the field by children representing the next generation of stars. And now, let's meet the All-Stars. Introducing the reserves. Elected to start, but unable to play. From the Cleveland Indians, Manny Ramirez. the Cleveland Indians, Chuck Finley. From the Cleveland Indians, Dick Pohl. And now, the starting lineup for the American League. Leading off from the Cleveland Indians, playing second base, Roberto Alomar. the Cleveland Indians, playing third base, Travis Freiman. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's give your 2000 All-Star teams a big round of applause. A sixth straight appearance in postseason is in jeopardy. The Indians are ten and a half games in back of Chicago in the AL Central. An organization is at a crossroads. And owner Larry Dolan certainly never expected this scenario in his first year. In late July, uh, we were presented with a dilemma I think the Cleveland Indians hadn't seen in some time. The team was drifting away from the division leadership, even the wild card was starting to seem somewhat remote. But the question is, what do we do? 
as responsible people, you have to look at all your options. And one of the options was, well, is it, is it time to take the team apart? Is that the thing to do? Uh, we gave it all these options considerable thought, but it became very clear as we developed through it what our course needed to be. We had a good core baseball team, and we had a fan base that wanted us to be in the playoffs. If there was any possibility we could get there, that's what we needed to do. So that's what we did. Larry Dolan sent a clear message to the fans that this was a team to believe in, and with a little help, it could climb back into the postseason picture. At the close of July, the Indians find themselves 11 and a half games in back of the White Sox and just one game over 500. The throw is in time. Can John Hart's facelift of the 2000 Indians provide the spark? Pitch coming to David. Hit high and deep. You can forget about this one. It is way back and gone. David Segui. Well, they got him to make contact. Not necessarily to hit grand slam home runs, but he did. And the Indians lead it 4-2. to two. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Did he put a charge in that one? What would the next two months bring? Well, first and foremost, it would present the need for Tribe fans to learn some new terminology, as the Tribe was five and a half games in back in the wild card standings. The postseason would have to be gained via a different route. A route that included a new, exciting, and addicting habit of scoreboard watching. Anaheim has taken a 6-3 lead against Oakland in the 14th inning. Scoreboard watching at its best. Yes, it is. The first nine games of August were against opponents that the Indians had to beat if they wanted to make a move for the postseason. The Tribe responds, going 7-2 in those nine games, gaining two and a half games in the wild card race, and then taking to the road on a six-game trip to Seattle and Oakland. Two ball clubs Tribe fans would come to keep a very close eye on. Each series begins to have a special meaning, but this three-game weekend series at Seattle was to be a true test. The Mariners had returned to Safeco Field on the heels of an East Coast swing that saw them beat up the New York Yankees and Chicago White Sox. They are the hottest team in the American League at the moment. We will find out about our new look ball club. The Indians drop game one of the series, but come back to take the final two games, meeting the challenge head on. Hammer to left field, and you can forget about it. Touch of all time for Travis Fryman. As the Indians end a week-long homer drought. There he goes. It's hit fair inside the bag and down the left field line. It'll get all the way to the corner, and Chan Perry will score easily. An RBI double by Will Cordero. It's 9-4 Indians. Strike three called. Oh. That's about as good a knee buckler as you are going to see. However, the Indians would then throw it all away, dropping three straight to the young and talented Oakland A's, including a heartbreaking loss on the final day of that road trip. Bases are loaded. One out, a one run ball game. Line drive down the left field line. It's a fair ball, and the A's win the ball game. Oakland comes back with three runs in the bottom of the ninth inning, and they pull out a win 7-6. to six. They sweep the Indians. Tribe fans begin to wonder if it just wasn't meant to be. All the injuries, a baseball record 32-man pitching staff, and a wacky September schedule that just may be too much to overcome. Seattle and Oakland visit Jacobs Field. Spirits are low. The flame is beginning to lose its heat. It is a chance, however, to make up for a missed opportunity on the West Coast. Game one of a three-game series versus Seattle. It's a Friday night, and what could arguably be the turning point of the season. Kenny Lofton facing Arthur Rhodes, the Tribe down 8-6 to six with two outs in the eighth inning. Swung on, hit high in the air to deep center. On the run is Cameron, looking up, gone to the bleachers! it with a two-run home run to left center. How about that? That 
just said he looked comfortable against Rhodes, and he has his second career home run off Arthur Rhodes. The patient's pulse was beating again with a purpose. Freeman hits a ground ball toward third by a diving gear down the left field line. A game-winning base hit for Freeman. The Indians go on to sweep the Mariners as the bats explode with 10 runs on Saturday and 12 on Sunday. The Indians are just one game back in the wild card race. As Sagi sends one to deep center field. Back goes Cameron, still back at the track, leaping at the wall, and it's gone into the Indians' bullpen. David Sagi with his 14th home run. The pitch, a swing and a high fly ball, deep left center. This ball is going, it is gone! Manny Ramirez with his third grand slam of the season. His 13th career grand slam. Five nothing tried. A swing and a miss. Oliver tried to hold up and chase ball four. He strikes out to end the ball game. He delivers. Lofton hammers one to deep right field. This ball is going. Gone to the lower deck. Three games in a row for Kenny Lofton with a home run. Wind or no win, he really teed off on Aaron Seeley. Runners go. It's a swing and a miss. Alomar's throw to third. Plenty of time to tag out Al Martin. And Seattle may have run themselves out of an inning. The next pitch. A swing and a drive down the right field line. It is on its way. Gone! A grand slam for Kenny Lofton down the right field line. How about that? It's Kenny Lofton 5, Seattle nothing. The payoff pitch. Cordero wide drive, base hit, right field. Scoring is Toby around third and scoring is Segui. And it's a two-run single for Will Cordell with two down here in the fourth inning. And the Indians now lead it nine to nothing. Revenge is in the air as the Oakland A's visit Jacobs Field for a three-game series. Manny Ramirez, Jim Tomey, Travis Fryman, and Sandy Alomar power the Tribe's offense for 14 runs, and Chuck Finley wins number 10 with five solid innings in game one of the series. The pitch. A swing and a line drive, base hit into left. Tomey scores the tying run. Sagi moves up to third. And Fryman stays red hot with his 82nd RBI. Alomar hits it hard through the left side. One run is in. Here comes Cordero. Here comes the throw to the plate. And he will go in standing. The pitch to him. And it's strike three called. Marvin Hudson hesitated. Then did the old Leslie Nielsen line behind the plate. The one-two delivery. Swung on, drilled to deep left. There she goes. Go on to the home run porch. Well, Manny said to heck with right field that time. He turned on it in a hurry. Home run number 26. RBI number 81. A swing and a bullet. Hit down the right field line. Into the right field corner. That'll score Vizquel. That'll score Alomar. Into third Ramirez. In with a stand-up double Jim Tomey. How did he hit a P? 13-3 Indians. In game two, it was the bullpen that gives the Indians their fourth straight win in the homestand. Tossing three and two-thirds innings of scoreless relief. Capped by Bob Wickman's sixth save. That one to center field. Back is long. The ball's over his head and gone. To dead center field. A line shot out of here. Jim Tomey's 31st of the year. Alone the wind in the 1-1 pitch. And it's swung on and hit deep to center field. Lofton on the run. Lofton at the track. Lofton makes a catch up against the wall in deep left center. He delivers. Hyatt gets it on one bounce towards second. Alomar diving into right field. Gets up, throws it out. Another spectacular play by Alomar. The pitch. Strike three call. Nailed the inside corner. Oh, what a mammoth strikeout that is. The payoff pitch. 
A swing and a line drive back up the middle into center field on the base hit. And that is career base hit number 1,000 for Jim Tomey. Lofted it. Sends a line drive into right center. Base hit in the gap. Cut off in the gap by Long. He bobbles the ball. Throw to second, not in time. Scoring our Freiman and Cordero. And Lofton stays red hot. The 0-2 pitch. Check swing bouncer right side. Alomar with a little flip to first, and the Indians have won five straight. The Indians are now 66 and 56, 10 games over 500, and have moved past Boston into the top spot in the wild card standings. But Oakland avoids the sweep by outscoring the Tribe 11 to 7 in the finale of the three-game set, dropping the Indians back a half game behind Boston. And this is gone. Slam home run for Terrence Long, and the A's take the lead 5-2. to two. August comes to a close with a final road trip to the West Coast. Three at Anaheim and four at Texas. And the Indians stub their toe, losing two of three to the Angels, including an ESPN national telecast where Chuck Finley fails in his return home. The hits just keep on coming for Darren Erstad, and Chuck Finley's return to Anaheim. He is over. In the heart of Texas, the Indians rebound, taking advantage of a banged up Rangers club and winning the first three of the four game series. But they lose the finale in what was one of the most agonizing games of the season a four hour, 21 minute defeat. The second longest nine inning game in the history of baseball. However, the dog days of August were good to the tribe. An 18 and 10 record in the month and a red hot 10 and 2 at Jacobs Field. After five months, the Tribe sits at 70 and 60, one game up in the wild card race as the pages of this suspense thriller are turned to the final chapter. He slides, he's safe, three run score for the Indian. September begins with a 14 day, 13 game homestand against Baltimore, Tampa Bay, Chicago and Boston. And if that sounds like a lot of baseball, it's just the beginning for this Cleveland Indians team who will be severely tested over the next 30 days. With just one off day, the Indians are about to play 34 games in the next 31 days. The string of five straight American League Central Division titles is becoming unraveled, while at the same time, the excitement of a pennant race has Tribe fans reminiscing of postseason's past. The Orioles' first trip to Jacobs Field and the return of Mike Hargrove adds spice to a critical homestand. That's a fair ball down the line. Coming home to score is Alomar. Bouncing ball to third. They got a chance for two. Second for one. On the first double play. And the Indians finished 18 and 10 in August. Chance here to go to 1 0 in September. Vizquel's throw will end the ball game. The Indians take game one against the Orioles. Payoff pitch. A swing and a broken bat liner into right field. It's a base hit. That'll score Lofton. Ramirez on his way to third, and Tommy delivers. The two out RBI single. The drive up 1 0, and Kenny Lofton ties the major league record, scoring in his 18th consecutive game. No balls and one strike. There goes Lofton. Throw to third is high. Gets away from Conan. Kenny's going to score, and the Indians will tie it 2 2. Once again, Kenny Lofton does it with his speed. They should sell him in a box. Call it instant offense. Lofton runs, the pitch is a ball, the throw is second, not in time. A record for Kenny, he matches the club record with his fifth stolen base of the afternoon. Fly ball, well hit, deep right field, back is Bell, the ball is up, the ball is gone! Kenny Lofton into the bullpen, the Indians win it 12 to 11. The Indians win two of three from the Birds of Baltimore. Then take three of four from Tampa Bay to run their season record to 75 and 61 and a two game wild card lead. And Creek's pitch. 
A swing and a little looping fly ball toward the left field line on the run and letting him drop near the line is tighter. It gets by him and Brannion, who is on his way to second, makes the turn. He'll try for third. Tyner's throw to third. The slide safe at third. Oh, what hustle by Russell Brannion. Greg Vaughn, a three-run homer, and this one driven deep to left field. Roberts at the wall, makes the catch! Dave Roberts! He delivers. Strike three, called on the curveball. Ball game over. Paul Shuey made it look easy. Each game, every victory and every defeat, the emotional roller coaster ride each pitch determining if we're having a good day or a bad day. Now the surprise of the American League. The Chicago White Sox waltz into Jacobs Field atop the American League Central Division, seven and a half games ahead of the Tribe. The Indians need a sweep if they hope to remain the only team to have won the AL Central title since the three division format was established in 1994. Game one is a tough one-run loss, dropping the Indians eight and a half back. All eyes are now focused on the wild card race, which the Indians lead by two games. Game two belongs to Dave Burba and the Tribe. He swings and misses. He strikes out to start the second. Whenever Durham and Valentin get on, it seems as though they're scoring, although Durham will not get on here. He's gone on strikes. Looking at second, comes to the plate. Alomar lines it by a third baseman, Norton, and down into the left field corner. The skill will score easily. And into second with an opposite field, double is Robbie Alomar. The next pitch, a swing and a smash up the middle into center field. Robbie Alomar with his fourth hit. Sunday's game is called due to rain. And with two doubleheaders on the calendar just a week away, the Indians are hoping this game will not have to be played unless it's absolutely necessary. League officials would later have a different opinion. This two-week homestand is coming to a close with a three-game series versus the Boston Red Sox. The wild card race is now at full speed. Game one belongs to Boston. They strike for six runs off Chuck Finley. It would be the last time Chuck Finley loses a game down the stretch as he will reel off four straight wins to close out the season at 16 and 11, including a six and one record in the month of September. Bartolo Colon wins the first of what would become daily must win games, getting win number 13. Manny and Russell Brannion each homer. Hit high and deep to right center field. On the run is Everett. This ball's out of here. Manny Ramirez has done it again. Boy, is he hot. We've noted before that Bartolo will slow down when he gets runners on base and he blows him away. The pitch. Brannion sucks one. Deep right. Forget about it. Way out of here. Russell Brannion to the lower deck and right. And it's 2-0. Swing and a miss. Charlie Nagy makes his first start since May 18th in the rubber match of this three-game set. The opponent, Pedro Martinez, who is unbeaten at 8-0 lifetime against the Tribe. The Tribe scores three off Pedro, but as would be expected, Nagy cannot escape the rust, and the Red Sox win 7-4. Fly ball, well hit into left center field. Kenny off and back at the warning track near the wall. The ball is off the wall. The runner around third, Everett will score. Garcia Parra has an RBI double, and the Red Sox take the lead. 46 pitches for Charles Nagy, and there's a fly ball well hit into left center field. Kenny Lofton watching this one go up and out into the seat. The Indians finish the homestand with an 8 and 5 record. One game up in the wild card race and embark on the most critical stretch of games during what has been a month of critical games. Awaiting the Indians, a 12 game road trip in just 10 days with stops in New York, Boston and Kansas City, including five games in three days at Fenway Park. Obviously the schedule maker is not a Tribe fan. Up first, a four game series at Yankee Stadium. 
pre-series talk centers on possible postseason matchups, as this series has Dave Burba against David Cohn, Orlando Hernandez against Jason Bure, Chuck Finley taking on Denny Nagel, and then Bartolo Colon doing battle with Roger Clemens. The Tribe takes three of four as the Indians' top three pitchers, Burba, Finley, and Colon, rise to the occasion. In fact, it would be this trio that would carry the Tribe's hopes for a playoff spot, going a combined 13-1 in the month of September. Segui with a fly ball, deep right field, back is O'Neill to the warning track to the wall. It is gone, a grand slam home run by David Segui, and it's an 8 nothing lead. Struck him out, and the inning is over. 2-1. Manny lifts it high in the air to right. Jose Canseco oh. misjudged the ball. It's going to drop. Here comes Lofton. 15 to nothing. A little chopper going to be a tough play. Omar Marion got him. Oh, what a play. Manny to base hit to right field. Might have broken the bat. But the Indians take a one to nothing lead. We might have number 27 here. Lofton going back to the wall and made the catch. Oh what a play by Kenny Lofton. Here it comes. Strike three call. 16 in a row for Bartolo Colon. They'll stay back on the right side, and it's hit up the middle for a base hit. Breaking ball, strike three, Cole! Bartolo Colon with a one-hitter! Winning three of four from the Yankees made the upcoming three-day Boston Marathon a little easier. However, the Indians dropped game one of the five-game series, and this coupled with an Oakland win keeps the Indians in back of Oakland in the wild card race. In addition, the Red Sox close in the wild card standings. Now the Indians face back-to-back day-night doubleheaders at Fenway, and Pedro Martinez is on the mound in game one against Steve Woodard, who had really been struggling. The emotional roller coaster ride is in full swing. The Indians and Red Sox have had some great battles over the last five years, mostly in postseason, and there's no love lost between these two franchises. What would transpire on September 20th would be no exception. In fact, that day-night doubleheader may have been two of the greatest games played all season long. Two one-run victories, a day that started at 1 p.m. with Pedro versus Steve Woodard and ended at 11.04 p.m. with Bob Wickman slamming the door twice in the same day as the Indians go from a half game out to a half game lead in the wild card standings. The 1-1. Into right field, a base hit down the line. Fitzcal rounds third as Lofton scores. Nixon hits it to first. Tommy goes to second. One out there, back to first. Double play, and the inning is over. The pitch. Kept his swing. He went around. The ball game is over. The throw to first, and that ends it. Lofton, Vizcal aboard, and Alomar. Base hit through the left side. One run is in. Here comes Lofton racing to the plate. He will score. It's three to two. Steal it home, the game is Omar oh, Vizquel, unbelievable. Broken back, looper towards second base. Vizquel plays it barehanded and throws him out. Ground ball to second base. Alomar, Tommy, the Indians get the sweep. The Indians hold him off. Wickman saves both games and 5-4 is the final score. The Indians begin the home stretch of the Boston Marathon, another day-night doubleheader in a full-out sprint, scoring seven runs in the first inning. Matt, we talked about it in the first inning. In this ballpark, no lead is safe. No, absolutely. I mean, the Red Sox have ample time to get back into this game. Boy, how prophetic. Unfortunately, no truer words were spoken 
The Red Sox came back and they win it 9-8. Chuck Finley, working on three days rest, takes the mound in game two, looking to regain that momentum. Strike three called on the inside part of the plate. Hit to right field. They're going to wave Alomar around. Throw going to come to the plate. And Robbie is safe. Robbie Alomar to the skill. Double play. Do you believe it? Bounced at the scale. The fielder's choice ends the ball game. Kansas City is the final road stop of the season. The Indians are 15 games above 500, 31 and 18 since the trade, and tied with the Oakland A's for the wild card. This roller coaster ride is not slowing down. Kansas City continues the AL Central's inexplicable dominance over the Indians in 2000, winning two of three. The Tribe's lone win was a masterpiece by Bartolo Colon. He notches win number 15. Hit well by Ramirez to right, back to the track. Looking up, goodbye, Manny Ramirez has hit number 33. What a play by Vizquel, and they got him. Strike three called. We head home for the final week of the season. It's truly do or die time as the Indians find themselves with the best record in the American League since the All-Star break, but still one game back in the wild card race and looking to others for help. History awaits the Indians at Jacobs Field as the final week of the season begins with a day-night doubleheader against two different teams. The Indians and White Sox, on the orders of the commissioner's office, must make up that rained out game of September 20th. So it's the Indians and White Sox at 105, the Tribe and Twins at 705. The first time a team played host to two different teams on the same day since 1951. History aside, it was the third doubleheader in six days and may have taken its toll. The Indians beat the Chai Sox, who the night before celebrated their AL Central title. But they lose to the Minnesota Twins 4-3 in the first of four games against their divisional foe. That loss drops the Tribe a game and a half in back of Oakland. Chuck Finley and Jason Bure win games two and three of that series. Then the Twins deliver what would eventually be the knockout blow, a 10th inning win. But Oakland also loses, so the Indians remain a game and a half back with three to go. It's the final weekend of the season, and the Indians look to the Texas Rangers and Anaheim Angels for help. Oakland is at home against Texas, Seattle is at Anaheim, and the Indians play host to the Toronto Blue Jays. The Indians erase a 4-0 deficit thanks to homers by Jim Tomey and Manny Ramirez. And the bullpen allows just one hit over seven and a third innings. Tomey hits it from deep to center field. Way back is Cruz watching this one sail. Wow. Deep in the bullpen. Oh, man. <laughs> Holy cow. Ramirez, a drive to deep left field. Way back. And gone. Ramirez goes deep. The Indians make it a three-run lead. A swing and a pop-up. Shallow left center. The Scal Camp Dundred. The Indians are going to win after an unbelievable outing by its bullpen. Later that evening on the West Coast, things are really heating up as Oakland wins and Seattle loses, putting them in a virtual tie for first place in the AL West. The Indians are now just one game back with two to play. Chuck Finley and Robbie Alomar pace the Indians to a 6-5 win on Saturday. But the day ends in a stalemate. Both Oakland and Seattle win. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Robbie hits it in the air to left. It's slicing and... Gone! A home run for Robbie Alomar! The pitch. Swung at ground ball in the hole, Vizquel backhand spinning, throw to second for the out, ball game's over!
Now it's down to game 162. The Indians one game back with one game to play. And 20-game winner David Wells on the mound for Toronto. An absolute must-win game for the Indians. Charlie Manuel hands the ball to Steve Woodard, who will be trying to duplicate his clutch performance against Pedro Martinez at Fenway Park 10 days earlier. The 0-2 pitch, a swing and a miss. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Toby hammers it down the right field line. This ball is going, gone! Jim Toby with a three-run home run. And that may in fact have been the knockout punch against David Wells. The 1-0 pitch, a swing and a fly ball, hit pretty well to left. Stewart's looking up. This is gone to the bleachers. Sandy Alomar, a two-run homer. The party continues on the corner of Carnegie and Ontario. The right-handed pitcher delivers. A swing and a miss. He strikes out Green. Woodard's retired 15 in a row. Frascatore looks in. He sets the 0-1 pitch. Manny drives one to deep center field. Cruz Jr. on the run. Looking up. It's gone. set of the 2-2 delivery. A swing and a broken bat pop-up behind the mound. Freiman is there, collides with Rincon. Did they make the catch? Yes, and is everybody okay? Freiman is hurt. Freiman is hurt as Rincon collided with him. The game is over, but Freiman is down on his knees. Win number 90, a three-game sweep of Toronto to close out the season. 20 and 12 in the month of September, and owners of the best record in the big leagues at 38 and 21 since the trade on July 31st. A true fight to the finish. In the end, unfortunately, all that hard work, all that joy, and all those frustrations, the emotional roller coaster ride ended as we scoreboard watched Seattle and Oakland decide their own fate by matching the Tribe's victory on the final day of the season. The 2000 season was an emotional roller coaster ride that provided all of us with many memorable moments. Together we enjoyed a baseball season only the brave could embrace. We discovered that every game, whether it's played in April or August, counts the same and that every pitch in September determined whether we had a good day or a bad day. We were hooked on scoreboard watching, and the month of September was our October of the past five years. We hope you enjoyed our look back at the 2000 season and are excited about the 2001 season, in which the Cleveland Indians will be celebrating their 100th anniversary as one of the charter members of the American League. A full array of promotions and special events will highlight this historic 100th anniversary celebration, which should make Cleveland Indians baseball in 2001 extra special. It's time to say goodbye and thank you. But we are not done reliving some very special moments that occurred during the 2000 season. Stay with us. We have two short videos that you do not want to miss. Gather around the TV set for the first one because you are about to be dazzled by one of the greatest defensive teams in the history of baseball. The 2000 Cleveland Indians set the American League record for the fewest errors in a season, just 72. We'll show you why they are the best. Then finally, for you fans of rock and roll, we've added a few songs from the Cleveland Indians Charities Tribe Jam concert that features Omar Vizquel, Jim Tomey, Dave Burba, former Tribe pitcher Mark Langston, and others on Nautica's stage. We hope you enjoy it. So long, everybody. Alomar up the middle, has it, spins, throws, got him! What a play! One hit back up the middle, caught by Woodard! Oh, 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 oh. I don't believe it!
Robbie Alomar to the skill. Double play. Do you believe it? Boston going back to the wall. Justice, Alomar, Robbie with a great basket catch. Randy grounds it up the middle, Vizcal makes the play, can he throw him out? Yes, he does! Wow! Omar on the backhand, the long throw, got him! <laughs> this count gets there, can he throw him out? Yes! Another oh, no. brilliant play, Kenny Lawson is back at the warning track, at the wall, leaps up and makes the catch! Finlay's pitch, Rodriguez hits a ground ball up the middle, Robbie Alomar diving backhand flip to the scale, won the relay, double play! Rack it up, another highlight! And it's knocked down by Alomar and got him! It pass, no drive and diving stab, gets up and throws him out! John McDonald. Pop up. Foul ground. Toby. Carse. Carse makes the catch to end the ball game. Jeff Abbott swings at the first pitch and pops it up. Travis Bryman. What a play! This is bounced to the right side. Robbie Alomar got him. Fryman knocks it down, gets up, got him. Cordova bounces it towards Vizquel, bare hands it, got him. <laughs> there he is, right on. Come on, Vizquel. <laughs> Broken back, looper towards second base. Vizquel plays it barehanded and throws him out. Swing of the ball in the dirt, throw to second, and he's out. Bouncing up the middle. Alomar jumps and throws. up the middle. Alomar out of the glove to Vizcal for two. Nagel has walked three. Finley who knocks it down. Can he recover in time? Yes. Hey, how about that? Very good. There's the fair hand. Pick up and throw and he got him. Runners going. Throw to third. Got him. Oh, what a throw by Anar Diaz. Casey with a fly ball, well hit to left field, back is Cabrera, at the warning track, at the wall, leaps up, and makes a tremendous catch! Ground ball to second base, backhanded by Alomar, the flip to Vizquel on the first for two. Tonine lines it into left center field, Justice on the move, makes a sliding backhanded catch, chance for a double play, the inning is over. Ground ball up 
the middle. This Kel gets there. Can he throw him out? Yes! The pitch. Hit right back up the middle. Behind second. Alomar back in and flipped to Vizquel. Turns the double play! How about that one? Alomar and Vizquel just keep topping each other. Sometimes here, babe, need something to keep you cool. Ah, uh, now sometimes here, babe, need something to keep you cool. Well, you better look out now. Dave's got something for you. I'll tell you what it is. I'm your ice cream man. Stop me when I'm passing by. Oh, my, my. I'm your ice cream man. Stop me when I'm passing by. All my flavors guaranteed to satisfy. Hold on a second, baby. I got put on my little Dixie cups. All flavors and push-ups too. I'm your ice cream fan. Stop me when I'm passing by. She know all my flavors are guaranteed to satisfy. Hold on one more. While I'm usually passing by, just around 11 o'clock. Never stop, I'm usually passing by just around 11 o'clock. And if you let me cool you one time, you'll be my regular stop. All right, boys, I got put on my little Dixie cups. All flavors and push up to I'm the ice cream man. Stop me when I'm passing by.
want you guys all to help us out on this. I wanna rock and roll all night and party every day. I 